I know very well that I haven't a chance, but lying won't help that. Besides, I don't like to lie to you. I can't. I don't want to lie to you, even for your own good. Oh, no. Nothing serious, darling. Don't be frightened. No. Only when I said what I was wearing and, and when I told you I'd had dinner with Marta. <laughs> no, I, I haven't had dinner. I'm not wearing my red dress. I have my coat on over my nightgown because waiting for your call... Looking at the telephone, sitting down, getting up, walking back and forth, I started to go crazy, crazy. Then I put the coat on to go out to get a taxi to take me in front of your windows to wait. Well, to wait, to wait for... I don't know what. Oh, you're right. I, I know. I, yes. I'm listening, yes. I'll answer everything, I swear. Here. But I haven't eaten anything. But I couldn't. I've been very sick. Well, last night, I wanted to take a pill to go to sleep. Well, I, I said to myself that if I took more of them, I'd sleep better. And then if I took all of them, I'd sleep without dreaming, without waking. I'll, I'd be dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I took 12 hot water. Oh, like a sledgehammer. And I had a dream. I dreamed of everything, just as it is. I woke up with a start, so happy, because it was a dream. And when I realized that it was true, that I was alone, that my head wasn't on your shoulder, that we weren't close together, I felt I, felt I couldn't. I couldn't live. Light, light and cold. And I couldn't feel my heart beating anymore. And it was taking so long to die. I was in terrible pain. After an hour of it, I phoned Marta and I, <laughs> I didn't have the courage to die alone. Oh, darling. Darling, darling. Oh, it was four o'clock in the morning. She brought the doctor who lives in her apartment house. I had a fever of over 101. It seems it's difficult to poison oneself. One is never sure of the dose, you see. The doctor wrote a prescription, and Marta stayed with me until tonight. I begged her to leave because you said that you would call me one last time, and I was afraid that she'd keep me from talking. No, no, I'm all right now. Very much so. Yes, that's true. A slight fever. Oh, hardly a hundred. Just nerves, don't worry. Oh, how clumsy I am. I promise not to worry you, to let you go in peace, to say goodbye as if you were meeting tomorrow. I am stupid, yes, I... Yes, stupid. And what's hard is hanging up, putting the light... Put Hello? Oh, I thought someone had cut us off again. Oh, you're kind, my darling. My poor darling. I've brought you so much trouble. Uh, yes, speak. Speak, say anything. <laughs> I was so sick that I felt that I couldn't stand it, yet all I need is to hear your voice, and I close my eyes, and I feel better. You know, you know, sometimes when we were in bed and I had my head on its little place with my ear against your chest and you were talking, I could hear your voice just as it is now over the phone. Oh. Coward. Oh, no, but I am the coward. I had sworn. You, you, but you've given me only happiness. But darling, please. No, that's not it. But since I knew, well, I knew, I expected it. Many, many, uh, many women think that they are living their lives near the men they love and they learn of the break without any warning, but I knew. No, I never told you, but really, at the dressmaker's in a magazine, I saw her picture on the table, wide open on that very page. It's human, or rather, feminine. Because I didn't want to spoil our last weeks. No, no. Naturally. Don't make me sound better than I am. Hello, I hear music. I said, 
I hear music. Hmm, I see. <laughs> well, you should knock on the wall and stop those neighbors from playing the gramophone at such an hour. They've developed bad habits because you never stay at home. No, don't bother. Marta's doctor is coming again tomorrow. No, no, darling. He's a very good doctor. There's no reason to hurt his feelings by calling another one. Don't worry. Of course she'll let you know. Yes, I understand. Besides this time, I'm brave. Really brave. What? Oh, yes, a thousand times better. If you hadn't called, I would have died. No. No, no, no. No, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Let's, let, let's find a way. Oh. No. Oh, oh forgive me. Forgive me, I know I'm making an awful scene and you're very patient, but you must understand me. I'm in agony, I'm in agony. This wire is the last thing that links us. <coughs> the day before yesterday, I slept. I went to bed with a phone. No, no, in my bed. Yes, I know I'm ridiculous, but I had it in bed because after all we're bound together by the phone. It goes to your house. And then... I had that promise of your last call. And then imagine how many little dreams I've had. The wires seemed to be strangling me. Then I found myself at the bottom of the sea that looked like the apartment in Auteuil. And I was linked to you by the tube of a diving suit. And I was begging you not to cut the air off. <laughs> well, you know, stupid dreams that sound silly when you tell them. But when, when you're asleep, they are real and terrible. <laughs> because you're speaking to me. For five years I have lived for you. You've been the very air I breathe. I've spent my time waiting for you, thinking you're dead if you're late, dying myself when I think you're dead, becoming alive again when you come in, and when you're finally with me, dying with fear that you might leave. No, I'm all right because you're speaking to me, but my dream wasn't so foolish. If you cut the conversation, you cut the air tube. <laughs> of course, I slept. I slept because it was the first time. The doctor said it's an intoxication. The first night one sleeps, suffering distracts. It's new, one bears it. What is unbearable is the second night, yesterday, and the third, tonight, in a few minutes, and tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and days and days doing what? My God, my... <laughs> no, I, I have no fever, not in the least. I see clearly. It would have been better if I'd had the courage to tell you lies. Well, even if I do sleep, there are dreams. And then waking and getting up and eating and dressing and going out. And going where? Oh, but my poor darling, I've never had anything but you. Well, I was always busy with you. For you. Marta's life is... Marta's life is organized. It's as if you asked a fish to arrange his life without water. Oh, I need no one, I told you. Distractions. <laughs> I'm going to confess something that isn't very poetic, but it's true. Since that memorable Sunday evening, I've been distracted only once at the dentist when it touched a nerve in my tooth. Alone. Yes, alone. Mm. Oh. Well, for two days, he... He's refused to leave the hall. Well, I've tried to call him, to pat him. He won't let me near him. A little more and he'd bite me. Yes, yes, me. He snarls and growls. He's another dog. He frightens me. At Marta's, but I'm telling you, he won't let me come near him. Marta had all the trouble in the world getting out. He wouldn't let her open the door. Yes, that would be wiser, dear. He frightens me. He won't eat and he won't move. And when he looks at me, I get goose flesh. How should I know? Perhaps he thinks I've done something bad to you. Oh, poor animal. I have no reason to be angry with him. I understand only too well. He loves you. He no longer sees you come in. He thinks it's my fault. But, you know, try to send Joseph. I think he'll follow Joseph. 
Oh, me. More or less, he doesn't love me at all. The proof is... It once seemed so, but I tell you, it's better that I don't touch him. Hmm. Well, if you don't want him, I'll put him in a kennel. It's useless to let him get sick and become a bad dog. But he won't bite anyone if he's with you. He'll love those you love. Uh, but no, I, I mean, he will love those with whom you live. Yes, dear, of course, but it's a dog. In spite of his intelligence, he can't understand. Well, I've been shameless before him. God knows what he has seen. I mean, perhaps he no longer recognizes me. Perhaps I frightened him. One never knows. Mm, just the opposite. Remember my aunt the night I told her her son was killed? She's so tiny and pale. <laughs> well, she became red and gigantic. And her red giant, her head hit the ceiling and she had hands everywhere and her shadow filled up the room and she was frightful, frightful. No, I beg your pardon, no, no, no. Just like her dog, it hid under the dresser and barked as if it were after some beast. Oh, but my dear, I don't know, how could I know? I'm not myself, I must have done some terrible things. Imagine I tore the package of photographs at one try without even knowing it, even for a man that would have been a feat. The ones for the passport, too, yes. Yeah. What? No, why? I don't need a passport anymore. No loss. Mm. I was frightful. <laughs> Never. I had the good luck of meeting you while traveling. If I were to travel again, I might have the bad luck of meeting you again. <sighs> oh, no, no. Don't insist. Oh, let me just... Hello? Hello? Oh, oh. Madam, ring off. We're on the same party line. Hello? Oh, but please, madam, we... Oh. Yeah, we are not trying to be interesting. Well, all you have to do is to get off the line. Well, if you find us ridiculous, why don't you hang up and not waste your time? Oh, oh, my darling, my darling. Oh, oh, don't be angry. Oh, well. No, oh, no, 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 this time it's me I touched the receiver. She rang off as soon as she made that nasty remark. You're hurt. Oh, but, but darling, this woman must be very stupid and she doesn't know you. Oh, she thinks you're like other men. No, no, darling. It's not the same thing at all. Sorry for what? Oh, forget it. Don't think any more of that foolishness. It's all over. Oh, how naive you are. Who? Oh, it makes no difference. But day before yesterday, I met... Um, I met the person whose name begins with S. Hmm? B S, you know? Oh, Rue Henri Martin. Yeah. Uh, she asked me whether you had a brother and if it was his marriage they were announcing. <laughs> what could I tell her? The truth, of course. An air of condolence. <laughs> I assure you that I didn't go on forever about it. I said that I had company at home. And it's too late for that. It's very simple. People hate to be dropped. Little by little, I dropped everybody. I didn't want to lose a minute of our time together. Huh. It makes no difference to me. They can say whatever they want. Well, let's be fair. Most people can't understand a situation like ours. Pe but with most people, it's either love or hate. When you're through, you're through, and that's all they know. You can't make them understand. You, no, but you'll never make them understand certain things. The best thing is to be like me, to make fun of them, <laughs> completely. <laughs> nothing, nothing, I talk and I talk, I think we're talking as usual, and then suddenly the truth hits me. <laughs> well, why try to fool ourselves? Yes. Yes. No, no. 
before we used to see each other. We could lose our heads, forget our promises, risk the impossible, convince ourselves that we loved each other by, by kissing, by clinging to each other. One look could change everything, but, but with this telephone, what's finished is finished. No. No, don't worry. <laughs> One doesn't commit suicide twice. Maybe, if I can't sleep. I, I wouldn't even know how to buy a revolver. Can you see me buying a revolver? <sighs> Where would I get the strength to invent a lie, my poor loved one? Hardly. I should have had the strength. There are times when lying is useful. You, you for instance, if, if you were lying, to me, to make the separation less painful. Uh, no, I didn't say that you are lying. I said if you were lying, and I knew about it. If, for example, you weren't at home and you told me you were. No, 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 darling, da listen. I believe you. I, di I didn't say I didn't believe you. But why are you angry? Of course you are. Your, your voice is angry. I simply said that if you were deceiving me out of the goodness of your heart, and I realized it, I would love you only more. Oh, hello? 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 Oh, no. Oh, God, let him call me back. 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 Let him call me back. God, let him call me back. Hello? Oh, we were cut off. I was telling you that if you were to tell lies to me out of kindness, and I realized it, I would only feel more tenderly toward you. Of course. <laughs> oh, you're crazy. Oh, I love you. My dear, dear love. I know we have to, but it's terrible. I'd never have the courage. Yes, it's like being close to each other, and suddenly there are cellars, sewers, a whole city between us. <laughs> Do, do you remember Yvonne, who used to wonder how the voice could pass through the telephone wire? I have the wire around my neck now. I have your voice around my neck. <laughs> yes, we would have to be cut off by chance. Oh, my darling, no. no. How can you imagine my thinking anything so ugly? I know very well that it's harder for you than for me. No. No, no, no. To Marseille. Oh, listen, darling. If you're going to to Marseille, I'd I'd like. <laughs> well, I wish you wouldn't stay in the hotel where we used to stay. You're not angry. Because things that I don't imagine don't exist, or rather. They exist in a sort of place that's very vague and that hurts less. You understand? Thank you. Thank you. You're good. I love you. Hmm? Well, then, yes. I suppose so. <laughs> out, of, out of habit, I almost said, until tomorrow. I doubt it. Well, you never know. Oh. Yes, it's better. Much better. My darling. My wonderful darling. I'm brave. Hurry. Hurry, go, go ahead. Hang up. Hang up quickly. Hang up. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you.